I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. Another request from Guillermo for Alexander's Project, which I've never heard of, for a reason. Thank you so much, Guillermo, seriously, for the request. Generous donation to my PayPal. If anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, with exceptions, but pretty much any type, you can request either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries, but if so, thank you so much. Now, I know I'm a bit backed up on stuff, but I'm doing my best to get to them. I'll get them done by the end of the month, no matter what. But, Alexander's Project. I guess, for some reason, I thought this was going to be a found footage film, because a lot of the films he requests are found footage. Not that that's a bad thing, to me it's an interesting thing. But it's not, it's more of a psychological drama. This guy comes home from his work. It's his birthday. He thinks it's going to be a surprise birthday party. But he realizes things are weird and the lights are off and the power doesn't come on. Except there's this TV and there's a tape. He's supposed to pop it in. He does. And it's his wife. And you think the wife is going to do the striptease. But instead, things take a turn where... She pretty much talks about how unhappy she's been. And she says, I feel I don't exist. And how unhappy she's been. And she says she's got breast cancer. Then she says, no, I don't. And then says, well, you didn't marry me. You married my body. And you look for opportunities to touch me without me asking. And then... Talks about how he demeans her, I guess. So that's why she has sex with strangers and random people to a point that she's kind of a hooker. In fact, there's one of them, you find at the very end, that calls her mistress. And then Prima says, I'm leaving. You're not going to see me or the kids ever again. The guy's crying and crying. One thing leads to another, he goes to another room, finds this guy who says stuff like, because the husband's like, ah, she's bad. And he goes, I understand, she was not. The way the guy, not the husband, but the other guy who's there, who deals with the equipment, he's saying that something happened to him and his wife. And I, then I understood that she was not mad. It was I who caused her that way. I drove her mad, but she was not mad. Bullshit. 
this bitch is crazy. This bitch is fruitier than fucking fruit, fruity pebbles. Fruit Kate. She's a fruit Kate. She's a nutbag. She is fucking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. She needs their bed, their tricks, and get some fucking snap, crackle, and popping through people's assholes the fuck away from everybody. This bitch is crazy. And if that's what it was trying to deal with, it, it kind of did in a piss poor fashion. Because it, it, it seems as if the movie is trying to make us think that the husband was such a bad person that you're supposed to create these conversations after the end of the movie. Who is right? Who is wrong? How far does revenge go? How far does revenge... How far should you take it? When's it too much? The problem is... This guy doesn't seem that bad of a fucking guy. Perfect? No. But he seems like a good father. He treats his kids well. The kids treat him well. What he's talking with his wife. He's not putting her down as in calling her fucking names. Or giving her snide looks or evil looks or any of that sort. Perfect? No. She goes, I don't know why you don't let me do the bill paying. And he's reading the newspapers like, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. He could be a jerk every once in a while. So is fucking everybody on planet Earth. Welcome to the real world. And not the fucking show. I mean, there's a scene where his, his daughter comes out, his older daughter. Oh, you're smoking. So he don't stand next to me. She says something. And what does he do? He puts the cigarette out. And he's acting nice. So. This guy is not that bad at all. He's not that horrible at all. Not in the slightest. And the punishment does not fit the crime. Is what I'm getting at. So if it's. I know some people don't like this film but hard candy because you're not sure if this guy really did what he was this little girl is if you've never seen hard candy you have these two characters one's underage another is this older gentleman and you're supposed to wonder for a good chunk of it is he this thing she has accused him of is he innocent that was done a lot more effective than say this. This, it actually gives you an answer. It, I get what it was going for. Here, I don't get what it's going for. I mean, is, is this like a feminist wet dream? And I read an interview, or not a review more, not an interview, a review saying, well, this is a parody on feminists and it's making fun of how far feminists go. Well, you know what? If you don't want to be a parody, then be fucking funny. Or let the, the bitch dear come up and, or something, man. I mean, the acting is good. The, the guy who plays the husband, the, the wife character who we see her the begin, in the beginning and then we see her mostly through this TV. The acting is good. The score is subdued, creepy, psychological tone to it. But it's the plot, the story, the subject matter, where the punishment doesn't nearly fit the crime. And it just, this bitch, you can't. It seemed like what this lady didn't do was ever talk to her husband. Ever talk. Hey, I don't like this, I don't like that. It seemed like this is like the biggest fucking passive aggressive angst of all time. Emo times emo. Infinity plus infinity plus infinity. And it just... If the movie is at all trying to make me sympathize with this lady, it's failing because of her actions, because of what she's doing. There's a logistics behind it because the stretches of, you know what, a simple fucking divorce paper or a simple conversation would have probably fixed all this. Sit down. We need a conversation. Either this or I'm leaving. This, I'm getting divorced. 
I mean, the way the setup, I'm like, oh, we're going to find out that this guy has been cheating on her and or has been molesting the kids or been molesting others' kids or strangers or has been cheating on this and this and has been burning her with cigarettes. And no, none of that. The, his only crime is office tosser didn't pay attention to her well you didn't touch me without me giving your permission god forbid a fucking husband wants to touch his fucking lady usually most films are about the opposite where the husband doesn't want to touch the lady anymore and then she gets upset about that now a husband who lights her body and she's getting upset about that did you say anything no you just sh fuck can't sit there with the fucking headlights on not say anything but I this is I guess the type of lady that thinks people are fucking psychic who's obvious what's well, so obvious then just fucking say it have a 10 minute conversation instead what the movie makes it look as if this bitch is just a crazy fucking bitch fuck you don't want your husband to touch you, but you want to demean yourself by having such with random fucking people to the point that you're running like a fucking brothel or something in your home without anybody noticing. Not the kids or anybody. And then it wants to have the scene at the end where, no, he just drove her mad, but she wasn't mad, but he drove her mad. If this is all it took for you to go crazy, what, if I sneeze on you, are you going to go on a spree killing? If I fucking cough in your general direction, are you going to commit arson? If I fart in the room, are you going to commit har Harry Terry? It just... So it ends with the husband sitting in his chair. He's just watching the same five seconds, which is the only footage of his kids. He just keeps watching it over and over again as he's crying with a bunch of beer bottles in his little place now. There's no one else there. And then the movie ends. So it's not a horror film, because I thought it would be a horror film. It's not. It It's a psychological drama. But it, if it's supposed to... It seems as if the movie wants us to think that the husband deserved this because of that dialogue. The other guy going, I was I who caused her that way. I drove her mad. She was not mad. I drove her. But he's positivity about his own wife. And as if that's what happened in this situation. That doesn't work though. All the dots don't fucking connect. They don't connect at all. It doesn't make sense. The punishment did not fit the crime. There wasn't even a fucking crime that I saw. If you had it where the guy was a piece of shit and blah blah blah, okay, maybe I could follow you. And then throughout you find out, oh my god. Or if you want to make him this nice guy, but as we're watching, you find out, oh, he cheated and he does drugs and oh my god, his kids were sleeping and he did this. No, none of that. He was a good father. People seem to like him in his job. He wasn't the best husband with his wife. Nobody is. But I would assume a lot of people watch this, they don't... What was the point of this movie? What was the point? What was the fucking point? Unless it's a feminist wet dream that go, well, men drew and women rule and see all the guy has to do is this and then they're the evil scum suckers of the universe oh, fuck. this made me mad it almost made me fucking offended fuck this movie Alexander's project it gets an F your project gets an F minus on an F scale of fuck you fuck this fucking flick fuck this piece of shit I'm glad it was for free on 2B TV. It should to be not to continued. Fuck.
The actors do their job. They're wasting it on a stupid fucking script that doesn't make any fucking sense. That I don't know what the fuck the point is trying to make. And whatever point is trying to make, it fucking fails and fails hard. Go watch Hard Candy instead or something else of that nature. Not this fucking bullshit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. This video didn't go fuck itself. Later.